Este fin de semana celebramos el buen pastor, nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Y en la iglesia también celebramos este fin de semana, la fin de semana por los sacerdotes, por vocaciones de sacerdotes. Y es muy importante para nosotros para recordar el buen pastor en nuestras vidas. Es muy fácil para olvidar la impacta en nuestra vida de Jesús, del sacrificio de Jesús por nosotros, para pagar la presa por nuestros pecados. Pero también para darnos todos, todos que, que tenemos, tenemos porque Dios nos ama. But many times we don't live that way. We don't see the gifts that God has given to us. We don't see the blessings that God has given to us. We know that Christ became man so that man could be reunited with Christ. But many times we forget that we have to be intentional about our faith. Que nuestra relación con Dios es muy importante. Es importante para tener una relación con Dios, solo y también por la comunidad, no solo, solo. But we have to have that personal relationship with Christ, but also that communal relationship with Christ. We are the body of Christ. Somos el cuerpo de Cristo. El Señor Jesucristo es nuestro head. He's the head of the body. But many times we don't have time for God. El número excuso que escucho es, no tengo tiempo por oración. Es una mentira. If we learn nothing else in the time of COVID, we learned we have way too much time. <laughs> But we don't spend time properly. We don't put our time on the things that matter. Instead of seeking to become like God, we turn other things into our gods. You know, there's a statistic that always comes out at the beginning of the school year that 0.00001% of high school athletes will become professionals. And yet, how much time and money, and effort do we put into our kids, not educations, not faith lives, but into their athletic ventures. Yes, support our kids. That's important. This week, I got to spend a lot of time watching your kids. Monday, I was out in Sayre watching our kids from Sayre and Canute and Merritt In their junior high track meet, it was awesome to see our kids participating. Tuesday night, I even canceled mass, God forbid, so that we could all go watch our boys and girls play soccer. I even had a baptism I had to go through beforehand, so I missed the JV games, unfortunately. But I was there for the varsity games. Wednesday, I got to go to Canute and watch baseball. That it is important to support our kids, but the most important thing to support our kids with is their faith. There's a statistic that I shared this week on our social media, and I think the attendance this evening shows that statistic perfectly. It says 93% of families where the male has a relationship with God where the kids continue their own faith. I looked around at Mass this evening and saw one, two, three, four adult men here. Five, I guess, technically. <laughs> But there's 44 of us here today. Five adult men. ¿Dónde están nuestros padres? Trabajo. O no tengo tiempo. O otros excusos. Porque la relación con Dios no es importante. 
¿Por qué? ¿Por qué es la relación con Dios no importante? Bueno, ¿por qué todos los sacramentos nuevos de este año están terminando? Last weekend we had First Communion. A couple months ago we had Confirmation. So we don't have to show up anymore, right? Wrong! One of the most beautiful things at the 5 o'clock Mass today was that two of our little kids that received First Communion last week came up to me, and I was expecting to give them a blessing because that's what I've done their whole lives. <laughs> and they said, uh-uh. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> Cuerpo de Cristo. <laughs> that they and their parents listened to the homily last week that I gave. That our kids can't get here by themselves outside of Gus and Rosa. None of you guys, I don't think, that are in high school have driver's licenses. I could be wrong. And so the only way that you guys can get here is if your parents bring you here. Yvonne, Brian, the only reason you're here is because your mom made you come. Gracias. <laughs> I'm glad that she makes you come. Now, part of it is because Brian wants to get confirmed next year. Good. But keep coming afterwards. That if we don't show our children what is important, the world is going to tell them what is. And what does the world tell our kids that is important? Money, status, stuff. When you die, do you know what you don't have? Money, status, stuff. Or as Jesus put it in the scriptures, what have you gained if you've gained the whole world and lost your soul? Jesucristo es nuestro buen pastor, pero no tenemos tiempo por él. Porque es difícil para caminar el lado de Dios. Pero es muy importante para tratar, poco a poco, cada más, cada día. Para invitar el amor de Dios entre nuestros corazones y entre los, nuestras cabezas y entre todo de nuestras vidas. Porque nuestro mundo es muy malo ahora. No hay esperanza afuera de este edificio. Hay muchos pecados. People don't think anymore. They don't love anymore. They don't act anymore. For those of you who are in the middle school here in Elk City, we saw that through the, some of the actions of some of our fellow middle school kids this last Wednesday. Some of you may not have a clue what I'm talking about. Some of you guys were at the school when it happened. There was a bomb threat at Elk City Public Schools. Now, it was a swatting, so it wasn't a real thing. But I can tell you that many of these kids don't want to go to school on Monday because of what happened this last Wednesday. There was a swatting that happened last year at Bishop McGinnis where there was a gun threat on campus. They locked down the whole school and officers went door to door with assault rifles in the faces of their children because they didn't know what they were going to find on the other side of the door. But it's just a joke just trying to get out of a test. We don't realize sometimes how our actions have consequences. And the most important action that happens every day that has the biggest consequence is whether we choose to spend time with God or not. I was reminded of that today at a funeral that I went to for one of our former parishioners. Paul Warnke, who died this last week. We always think that we'll have all the time in the world until we don't. Because at some point, God is going to call each and every one of us home. And for the forefathers that are here, 
It is your responsibility, the four husbands that are here. It is your responsibility, es su responsabilidad, para encrecer la fe de Dios en su familia. Primero en su vida. Segundo en la vida de su esposo, esposa. Tercer en la familia total. Si tienes niños, en la vida de sus hijos. Pero primero con su vida. Me gustan muchos niños en la iglesia. No tengo hijos de mí. Pero todos de ustedes son mis hijos. Gracias a Dios. Y buena suerte. No. Pero es muy real porque cuando la iglesia y gente en la iglesia tienen buenas cosas, toda la iglesia tiene esperanza. Or as Christ tells us in the scriptures, when one member of the face rejoices, we all rejoice. When one member of the faithful is sorrowful, we are all sorrowful. Because we are all in this fight together. Y no soy el buen pastor. Solo un pastor. Un pastor con problemas, con difíciles, con vida, con oportunidades para encrecer mi fe, pero algunas veces no tomar, no tomar estas oportunidades. Soy un pecador. Porque Él es nuestro perfecto buen pastor. Él es un modelo por fe de todos de nosotros. Él tiene problemas, cosas malas cerca de su vida. Pero siempre Jesús elegi, eligió el buen lado, el mayor lado, el perfecto lado. And he invites us to choose the same path. You know, this weekend we're called to pray for the future priests of the church. So single men that are here, little ones, bigger ones, Gus, <laughs> and younger, because I think you're the oldest single one that's in here, <laughs> Have you thought about how God is calling you to live your life? First and foremost, for all of us in this room tonight, God is calling us to a vocation of holiness, to a life of prayer. And then he calls us to a vocation of life. For most of us, God is calling us to the vocation of being a parent of being a husband, of being a wife. For some of us, God is calling us to a single vocation, to the consecrated virginity, which the world just despises today, the idea of virginity. Oh. For some of us, God is calling us to a different role in life, to a religious vocation, giving up your life as Christ gave up his life not for the salvation of souls, but to help lead souls to salvation in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, many times as a priest, I look out and it's easy to see a world that just has no hope in it. But if you could hear some of the stories of encounters with Christ that I've heard, that hopelessness would be hard to see sometimes. When I see some of our young people have such faith in them, and I'm not just talking about the little, little ones. I'm talking about some of our high school kids that come back and say, Father, man, that talk, that, 
book, that whatever it was, changed my life. It gives me such hope. When I'm in the confessional and people come to confession that have been every week for their whole life or haven't been in their whole life. And they bring the deepest, darkest parts of their life out of the darkness into the light of Christ. And that courage that it takes to say, forgive me, Father, for I am a sinner. And then to say out loud what your sins are in fear of me judging you. Well, guess what? I don't care what your sins are. I'm not going to judge you. As some of the kids found out at the soccer game on Tuesday night, they said, Father, like, how hard is hearing confessions? I said, it's not that hard. Oh, it's got to be pretty hard. You've got to hear some pretty bad stuff. I said, yeah, I do. But what's the worst thing you've ever heard, Father? I said, There's nothing that you can think of that I haven't heard. They were scandalized. They said, what? You've heard everything? I said, pretty much. You've heard everything? Yeah. Oh. Because like for them, it was the, wait, does that mean people actually do some of those really, really bad things? Like they murder and they rape and they kill and they do all these things? Yeah. And you still forgive their sins? Yeah. I don't know if I could do that. I said, well, then maybe you're not called to be a priest. (laughs) Because my role in the confessional isn't to judge you, isn't to look at you differently, but to let you know that God loves you, that there is nothing that he will not forgive if you bring it to him. That whether I'm hearing confessions in the prison or for our first communicants, or for someone that hasn't been to confession in 40 plus years. My goal is the same, to let you know God loves you, and to let you know that it'll be okay, that you aren't alone, and that your sins don't define you. Allow the love of God to define you. That is your choice. It is your choice to hold on to those sins or to let them go. Let God in and let go of everything else. And I promise you, you will begin to see life with a better joy. Yesterday when I went to my priest support group as I go to every month, I went in and they're like, Danny, what's wrong with you? I said, Nothing more than normal. Why? They said, because you just seem too, I don't know, happy all of a sudden. (laughs) I said, well, there's two things that I know right now. One, I'm getting to go to confession in the next day. Two, I'm not moving. That brings me joy. (laughs) Because in 14 of our parishes, that's not the reality today. In 14 of our parishes, the priests are announcing this weekend that they're moving. And so the parishes are losing their father to receive a new father. But also as a priest, the priest is announcing, hey guys, I love you, but I have to move. I'm not moving, don't worry. (laughs) I want to make sure to say that because I said that during my last homily and people are like, father, are you moving? Were you not paying attention? I guess not. (laughs) You only hear what you want to hear. You heard, Father's moving. Oh, great. I mean, oh, no. (laughs) But you're going to have to, like, pry this parish out of my cold, dead hands for me to move. Because you guys are home. You guys are family. And you drive me absolutely bonkers sometimes. (laughs) But I love you anyways. Because I drive God crazy all the time. (laughs) And he loves me no matter what. And so as we continue through this Easter season, continue to see how God is calling you to holiness. Spend additional time every day in that relationship with God. And I promise you, you will begin to see more joy, 
more hope. And to begin to experience more peace. Not that the world can give, but that can only come to us from Jesus Christ, who is nuestro buen pastor.